Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A. We're going to answer some questions that people have been asking me. We're also going to do a little forum on a few things that are going on around the gallery. I hope that you'll hang in there with me. We'll be right back. <music> Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So the first uh, thing we're going to do here is talk about something I've been getting a lot of questions about lately and that is what has gone on with this tank. And I'm going to explain that a little bit if you've been watching any of my recent videos and maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. but. If you do, you do know that uh, recently I lost a very good friend um, who was a YouTuber to suicide. Uh, her name was Lee McMillan. If uh, you are familiar with YouTube, uh, you probably know that name very well. Uh, she was a very popular YouTuber. Uh, she and a guy named Max had Max and Lee for a long time. And then uh, they had... Um, split up unfortunately a year or so ago and uh, remained obviously friends they care about each other but she was stuck in Canada he went back to Australia the pandemic happened and there was a lot of things that went on there but anyways uh, Lee suffered from depression and uh, it was a very difficult thing and uh, unfortunately she took her own life here and uh, uh, anyways Getting back to the tank here, uh, most of you will remember that this tank was so full of plants. <laughs> it was actually so full of plants that it was getting to the point where it was growing so much that I was trimming it um, weekly and I still couldn't stay ahead of it to the point where I just decided I had to dismantle it in its current state and do something different with it and I decided at that point I had promised to make and dedicate a angel tank memorial tribute tank to Lee to her family that it would always be in my gallery that would be in her name and in fact there's going to be a little plaque right about here that will uh, signify that this tank is in memory of Lee this will always be an angel tank it may not always be exactly designed the way this is, but it will always be an angel tank and it will always be in Lee's name. So uh, that is what happened to this tank. As you can see, it's a totally different design. I did go with some gravel here and uh, underneath it is um, in the back mostly, I would say. Uh, you've got about three and a half inches of flugel stratum substrate in there and then it was all pushed in as any scaper knows you would push all that in and then the gravel is put over the top It's about two inches of gravel and in the front here three quarters of the way towards the front here it is all gravel and on the sides from here over all gravel as well that way we never get the dirt mixed in with the gravel we can clean we can have all kinds of uh, different uh, scaping ideas uh, that will keep this tank going for many many years and uh, I really like the way it turned out I do uh, it's got a little bit of problem with the uh, mold on the wood I did a video about that the other day and I hope you watch that because it's important to know why that shows up and that it does not hurt your fish so I'm really happy about this tank but this goes into another question about this same tank and how I get certain plants to work in gravel these are live plants here and they're in the gravel I'm going to show you why see these little things right here this is a cup that goes with like uh, Pepto-Bismol, you can get those, uh, or you can get it with uh, NyQuil or any of those kind of things. So what I basically do 
is, I'm not going to demonstrate it because it's just going to take too long and it's going to be very invasive for the tank, but just take my word for it. What I do is I fill, I'm going to get a little closer to the camera, to about right here with substrate, just normal uh, dark substrate. Whatever plant that I'm going to put in, I put in, in the uh, dark substrate and then the um, gravel that is going to go on top ends up being the part that I put right around the top of the plant, which gives it a heaviness. It makes it so the plant can't come back out. Then I just take it and I push it down into the gravel as far as I possibly can. It's a great little tip because it works fantastic. And um, once I've done that, I just scoop the gravel in the tank over the top of it so that these edges are not seen. Every once in a while, you may have to brush that up. Fish are gonna move uh, substrate around or gravel or whatever. And I do use a very natural and very organic uh, substrate that already has beneficial bacteria in it. So it is a great product, it's expensive. I'm not gonna endorse that product at this time. Right now I am working on something with these people to endorse it, but uh, I'm not gonna say anything right now until um, I know for sure where we're at with that. But it is a great product. I've never really seen that done before. It was a new thing for me, uh, having beneficial bacteria packed in sort of a liquidy uh, substance and it's beneficial bacteria fantastic idea uh, it's amazing what people come up with these days so if you want to plant something and you don't really know how to do it in gravel this is a great little idea I keep tons of these on hand this is actually from a hospital where you take your pills but uh, I have a friend that works at a hospital and these get thrown away all the time and so I have her bring me some of those and it's a great little uh, thing to have on hand. I've got a drawer full of these that I use for that sort of thing. So the next thing is I had a little problem with ick recently. Now I, I am a firm believer that ick is always in our tank and I'm going to tell you why. I have a tank that's been running for I would say two years and it's my Montana tank as many of you know I put that tank together because the stones that I collected in Montana they were kind of a pink coral color stone for those of you who watch my channel you're gonna remember that I collected those stones brought them back and did escape with them and that tank got really overgrown really really overgrown with a lot of plants and I was really trying to keep up on it I don't do a lot to uh, stimulate plant growth on purpose. I have good lighting and it's well balanced. I have good shaded areas, which is well balanced for the shaded plants and those kinds of things. I know what kind of plants like certain kinds of lights and that sort of thing. So, you know, I mean, okay, I've got, I've got those things, but I just don't really work at it that hard. I fur twice a week. Um, I use Seachem Excel, I use Seachem Flourish. I really don't use anything else. I do not overfeed my fish, so there's not a lot of organics in the water that would make the plants really grow uh, tremendously fast. So I don't know why, but for whatever reason, my plants seem to just go crazy, and I don't use CO2, and you would think the only way he's doing that is with CO2, I'm, I'm not. And uh, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna bring you over to that tank. I cut every one of those plants down right to the substrate. I mean, they were this tall. I cut them to the substrate about two weeks ago. I'm gonna bring the camera over really quickly. And I am going to show you, sorry about that, the results of that. If you look down here and over in here and here and here and here, all of these plants were right down to the substrate two weeks ago. And this is how far they have come back. It's truly amazing and remarkable because they're beautiful. 
And I would have never thought that they would come back like that. I took a chance because I didn't want to rescape this whole tank. I left pretty much everything else exactly the way it was. And uh, just took all these taller plants that were in the center and in the front. I didn't really think that these plants in the front, even though I was trimming them, were getting that tall until I started looking at some of my videos and realizing, wow, they had really, really grown. So we are going to go back over here now. And we're going to finish this video by talking about a few things. Hopefully that's back to where I was. Anyway, long story short, I was working in that tank. The only thing that's in there is Rummy Nose Tetris, a couple of um, uh, Ultim, very, very immature angelfish, which are being kept in there. Just, uh, they've been in there for a while. I haven't had any issues with those at all. And uh, probably they've been in there, you know, five or six months. In fact, when I got them, they were like this big. They were really tiny. And uh, nothing else has been put in that tank. Not a thing. And for whatever reason, I got a case of ick. Only on the Rummy Nose Tetras. That's the second time this particular group of Rummy Nose Tetras has gotten ick. And it is the second time that I haven't lost a single one. But they were covered in it. The angels, nothing. My uh, Corys, uh, my Siamese algae eaters, my Autosynclus, not a one of them showed any signs of ick. But the Rummy Nose Tetras, I think because I was working in the tank, I stressed them out. And for whatever reason, I don't know where this ick comes from. I mean, I really don't. I'm a firm believer that there's probably always ick in our tanks. There's so much controversy about that. And uh, anyways, I want to tell you something, because if you have plants in aquariums, this is the product that I recommend because ick X is absolutely amazing. I'm not going to endorse these guys. I'm just going to tell you my experiences with this. I have used this two or three different times. I have told friends to use this and in their planted tanks, they never ever lost any plants from using this product. And every single time using this product in combination of turning the heat up to about 83 to 86 degrees, depending on what your fish can handle, be very careful to make sure you check that out and you know what the fish can handle. But this stuff here just absolutely, it works. It really does work. And I'm just, I'm just, I couldn't be more happy about uh, the results that I get from this. Now, something that's weird and beneficial about this, I have no idea what it is. I always take out the charcoal or the carbon filtration because that's what they tell you to do on the back of this. Otherwise, you're just you know, filtering out the chemicals in here that are beneficial to kill the disease or the fungus. And, uh, but I don't stop dosing with the XL and the Flourish. And for whatever reason, if there's any algae in my tanks at all, by the time I'm done with the ICX and I continue with the ICX and the XL for a week or so, my tanks look better than they ever looked before, so I don't know if somebody can explain to me why this ICX combined with the Excel and the Flourish seem to work together to just stop algae in its tracks. I mean, I don't have an algae issue anyway, but I mean, there's some on the rocks, you know, the green stuff that I kind of like to look at and the stuff that you got to have in there for you know, your, your autos to uh, survive, your Siamese algae eaters, your plecos, all those things have to survive. And in order for them to do that, they have to have something to eat. So I don't want to destroy that, but at the same time, man, oh man, I mean, the tanks, as you just saw, you'll, you'll see that in the video, they're just absolutely stunning. <laughs> Almost makes you want to put a cap full of this stuff in your tank once a month just to kind of clean things up a little bit and I'm not telling you to do that and I, I don't do that either but it, boy it is tempting 
because this stuff is so benign as far as hurting your fish. I've never had any fish suffer from this stuff at all. Do good water changes while you're using it. Um, just, you know, take the carbon out, like I said. And this stuff is amazing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that here. And the last thing I wanna talk about before we end this video is, I am going to be doing a Q&A. I was gonna do a Q&A last Thursday, I believe it was. I was scheduled for a Q&A, and many of you might have seen that, and I did not show up for that. And there was a reason for that. The reason for that was, is I had a podcast that I had to do that overlapped that Q&A time, and I didn't remember that until the day of, so it really got beyond me. And the podcast has nothing to do with uh, my aquarium hobby. Uh, it's, it's my music thing uh, that I do. And uh, so I, I really apologize for anyone who may have been waiting for that podcast and uh, I didn't show up for it. So I'm gonna answer a couple of more questions that I have right up here. Uh, that are stuck on a little piece of paper big enough so I don't have to have my goggle glasses on to look at them. But anyways, Susan K. had a question regarding the fungus in my tank. Oh, okay. Well, I already answered that in a video. So if anybody wants to know what the fungus is on the wood in this tank right here, that is a very natural carbohydrate that leaches out of the wood. It happens particularly bad with spider wood. Uh, it happens with just about every wood that has not been in water and seasoned. Now what I mean by seasoned is that it has not been in water before and reached temperatures of at least 81 to 86 degrees where this fungus tends to thrive. Now basically what it is is organics just being attacked by the bacteria in your tank, which means that your bacteria is obviously working and it can be really, really unsightly. The thing that the question that Susan had was, does it harm the fish? Because apparently she's got the same thing going on. No, it does not. Uh, there's a great video that I just made about this because I thought it was a good time to do this. In fact, Susan's question stimulated that and uh, uh, I wanted to make sure everybody knew that that fungus, you can keep it under control a little bit by just getting in there doing your daily water changes uh, in your tank when you are uh, reestablishing your tank. I didn't have to recycle this tank, but whenever I rescape something, I always try to do water changes and put some st uh, stability by Seachem in there every day with the water changes. And I noticed this was happening with the wood. I knew it was gonna happen, but the wood was such a big piece that I couldn't put it in a pot and boil it. And uh, I didn't wanna leave it in a, a, you know, a five gallon or, or a 50 gallon uh, uh, drum with uh, water in it, which a lot of people do, and that will solve it. Then you get in there and you scrub it off every few days and whatever. I allow this to happen in the tank and I clean it off, I do a water change and it actually is beneficial because many of your algae eaters and your uh, bottom feeders, I've even seen the angels pick at it, eat this stuff. Now this has been about two weeks going now and it's just about gone. I'm seeing very, very little of it left on the wood and what I am seeing, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna bother scrubbing it off because the fish are basically eating it. Plecos go crazy on this stuff. I mean, they just absolutely love this stuff. I mean, it's kind of smelly and nasty, but hey, that's their world, man. That's the stuff that they like. So anyways, bottom line is that's what that is. And uh, you probably can't even see it in this tank. Maybe a little bit if you got really close, but uh, it's just something that happens whenever you put new wood in a tank. It's not harmful to your fish. Let your fish survive in it. If you want it to not cloud up your tank, you gotta stay up on those water changes and you gotta scrub it off with a toothbrush a little bit. Every time you do a water change, it takes a little bit of extra time, but it's worth it because the, uh, the wood is beautiful. You get the piece of wood that you want. 
and you don't have to go through the trouble of trying to find something big enough, you know, all this cauldron that you might have to put this thing in to boil it and dry it out. And uh, you can skip that process and just allow nature to kind of do its thing. Anyways, the last question was from, I don't know how to say this last name, John Waniki, Waniki, I believe it is, Waniki. Anyways, John's question was, how do I keep my water crystal clear like I do? I've talked about this a zillion times and I stand by it. Water changes is the answer to that question and it is just that simple. Doing weekly water changes of a quarter, which is about this much water in each tank, twice a week and uh, putting in um, some stability from sea chem to reestablish your bacteria in the tank from anything that you've taken out and just giving a good scrubbing back in these areas here with a toothbrush or whatever going along with a sponge on your glass I mean it really doesn't take that much and you can have crystal clear water like this like this like that over there like that over there like that over there 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 I mean I have literally fish tanks that people come in and they marvel at and they go my god how do you I, you know I want I want a tank like that I said do you want to do the work and I tell them what it takes to do it and they're like eh, no I don't really want to do that and it is a lot of work it is a lot of work but I like to do it I like to keep the tanks in pristine shape I like them to look beautiful all the time I like them to be well scaped got some beautiful lava rock in this guy that was one other thing I was going to point out to you and this is some stuff that I collected down in Oregon last summer during the pandemic I went down to a place called Lava Butte and you can't take anything out of the park because the park is a national park and you just can't take rocks out of there if everybody did that there wouldn't be anything left but on the sides of the road as you're going into the park this stuff is everywhere. I mean, it is literally littering the sides of the road in red, in black, in dark brown. I mean, there's there's different shades of this stuff everywhere. In fact, some of this is black, some of it is a brownish black. It just looks cool, I love it. And it is fantastic for helping to build beneficial bacteria because it's such a porous rock. And it is very lightweight until you get it in the water. Once it's been in water about an hour or two, it really fills up all of those little air pockets in there and it settles and that becomes a heavier stone. In fact, that is basically keeping this piece of wood down there because like I said, that piece of wood was not seasoned. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Thank you for the questions, Mike, Susan, and uh, I think it was John. Thank you for your questions. I appreciate it. I hope that I answered those and I hope the little tip on planting in gravel helped those of you who are trying to do something like that to give you a great idea on how to do it because it really does work. And man, if you run into an ick problem, and we're all going to eventually, it does not happen very often to me. I don't even know how that happened because I haven't put a new fish in that tank in a year at all so i don't know but this stuff i love it it's magic i love it it really 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 does work one thing i would add to that is read the instructions on the back of that and do exactly what they say and uh, you will cure your fish and you will not lose fish catch ick early that means doing health checks on your fish on a regular basis so if you're not doing health checks every day on your fish I'm, I'm kind of nutty. I go around count fish if I can. Um, I don't actually do that, but um, I kind of keep an eye on my schools of fish to see if they're getting smaller or whatever. And uh, if they are, you know you got a problem in your tank. But anyways, test the water in your tanks occasionally. You don't have to do this all the time. But I recommend that just because you have clear water does not mean you have clean water. I've said that a zillion times and I stick by that. Anyways, thank you for joining me today. Leave your comments down below, negative or positive, I don't care. 
uh, I am uh, open game for anything you want to say to me. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with it. But uh, if you want to leave your comments down below, hit the like button, subscribe, and share with your friends. Also, up here is a bell, and that is for notifications for any new videos that I may have coming out. And you will be one of the first to know uh, because you will have that uh, notification uh, bell up at the top um, in full use. And any video that I have coming out, you will know about. Anyways, thank you for joining me and we will see you on the next one.